Father, we pray that you will sharpen our brain, you will open our understanding, you will take away every veil of darkness in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that tonight, by the reason of your word, there shall be transformation of souls in the name of Jesus. We pray that every ardent heart shall be softened in the name of Jesus. Every heart that darkness has already covered, every heart that darkness has invaded, we pray that by the reason of your word, there shall be light in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that you will help us to know more of you tonight in the name of Jesus. We pray that you will help us to understand more of you tonight in the name of Jesus. We pray that every the, the, your vessel that you want to use, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will soak him in the name of Jesus with your blood in the name of Jesus. We pray that he shall see more revelations of you in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for everyone listening that wants to know more of you, that are confused, that they do not even know which word to use for their lives and their situation. Father, we pray that by the reason of today's teaching, oh Lord, we pray that you will help them to know what to do in the name of Jesus. Father, you will, we pray that you will speak your word in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that we have come to draw. We pray that you will, you will help us to draw from the living water in the name of Jesus. We will draw from the living water and will never thirst again in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered it. Thank you, Lord, because your presence is in this place. May your name be exalted in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. The Bible says in the book of Psalm 119, verse 105, that thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It, it continues in verse 130 that the entrance of thy words giveth light and giveth understanding unto the simple. I pray that as we are listening all over the world, wherever you are, and in any platform, any social media platform that you are listening, I pray that the word of the Lord will give you ultimate understanding tonight in the name of Jesus. So we are going to worship God right now. We will continue to bless the name of the Lord. Before all things, we have to bless the name of God, for he's always faithful to us. He's, he has never left us. He's always the same God, the same yesterday, the same today, the same forever and ever. He is El Shaddai, he is Yahweh, he is Yeshua, he is God, he is God in all, and all in God. He is everything you can ever ask for. He is everything you can ever demand for. He is everything you can ever seek for. He said in his word that we should ask, we should knock, and it shall grant unto us when we ask, when we knock, when we seek, and we shall find. Let us begin to say thank you, Lord. It's a privilege to be alive today. It's a privilege to, to join this platform. It's a privilege to, to be called a child of God. It's a privilege to know Jesus. Some people do not even know where to go about in the situations of life. But here we are. We are living in light. We are dwelling in peace. Let us begin to say thank you to Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we adore you. Father, we adore you. Father, we adore you. Father, we adore you because your testimonies are wonderful. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless your holy name. We bless you, Lord, for you are holy. Holy is your name. You are good and your mercy endure it forever. He who says and it come to pass. You are ale, we are ale, she. There is nobody that can question you. You are called the unquestionable God. There is nobody that can question you. You are called Father. You are called Yahweh. You are called all different sweet names. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Begin to bless the name of the Lord if the Lord is so good to you. Begin to bless the name of the Lord. For every situation, it's worth to thank God. For every challenge, it's worth to thank God. The Lord has allowed this because he knows that he will bring out testimonies from those things. Begin to say thank you to Jesus. Thank you to Jesus. He that delivers you from death. Thank you to Jesus. Father, we bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless the living water. We bless Bless he that speaks and it comes to pass. We bless you, we bless him. We bless you, Jesus, because we have come to draw from you today. Father, we bless you. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord, you are holy. Holy Lord, and forever you are God. We bless you, we bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord, you are holy, holy Lord, and forever you are God. We thank you, we thank you, Yahweh. We thank you, Lord, you are holy, holy Lord, and forever you are we thank you, we thank you, Yahweh. We thank you, Lord, you 
God. Ah, aleluia. Ah, aleluia. Aleluia. You are 
Unquestionable, 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 you are the Lord. I will exalt you, Lord, for thou art lifted me above my enemies. Your banner over me is love. I will exalt you, Baba. I will exalt you, Lord. Oh, Lord, you have lifted me above my enemies, your banner over me. Oh, I will exalt you, Lord. I will exalt you, Lord. Oh, you have lifted me. Your banner over me is love. Your banner over me is love. Kabi ya osi iwalolua. Kabi ya osi iwalolua. Kabi ya osi. Hey, kabi ya osi. Kabi ya osi iwalolu. Iwalolua. Iwalolua. Kabi ya osi. Iwalolua, eh. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, we give you praise tonight. Lord, we thank you for this moment to come and land at your feet. It's a privilege to sit down by your feet and be learning your word, knowing your mind. Father, take all the glory in Jesus' name. The Bible says the entrance of your word gives light and give understanding to the simple. Oh, Lord, I pray tonight. That your delight in your word will illuminate darkness in our heart today in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, I stand before you. I empty myself. I submit yourself. That you, God, you are going to teach us, O oh Lord, tonight in Jesus' name. As you go deeper in your word, there will be understanding. There will be insight. There will be revelation of your word tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. 
We bless listeners all over the world. We bless everybody in the studio that your name will be glorified in our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we are free. Praise the Lord. Uh, one more time, I wanted to welcome you to this uh, wonderful session of weekly Bible study. We call it Wednesday with the Lord of Christ of the Church, Sheraton Hotel Assembly in Ikeja. And as you join us all over on which platform, the Lord be with you in Jesus' name. I have told us for the past since month of uh, April, April, May, June, three months, sequentially, we have been learning under that broader theme, Life of Christ. We wanted to know in this time like this, Christians need to know the life of Christ, how we can imbibe the life of Christ. And we have learned so many things about the life of Christ, uh, 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 his humility, his contentment. We have learned so many things. We learned about holiness for the past three weeks. And last week, we started this particular teaching under this topic, putting self to death. Praise the Lord. When we were learning about holiness, somebody asked a question. He said, Pastor, why is it difficult that we cannot attain the level of holiness that God is demanding for us? God said in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 and 16, he said, be ye holy, for I, God, your creator, that you are serving, I am holy. The level of holiness that God demanded for us, and I told us then, holiness has to do with consecration. It has to do with set apart. Set apart. And the person was asking, why is it difficult? Why can't we attain that level? Why is it difficult that we cannot get to that level? Is it that God did not want to get want us to get to this level? And I answered, I said, no. God actually wants every believer. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, He said, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. God specifically wants everyone that has been in Christ to get to that level of holiness. Praise the Lord. And I said to us last week that the memory verse that we have been considering for this three months theme, Life of Christ, is in the book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. 1 John chapter 2, verse 6. The Bible says, He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. If anyone says, I am a Christian, if anyone says, I am a follower of Christ, if anyone says, I am following God, the writer is saying here that you ought to walk just as Christ has walked. If Christ indeed lived a life of holiness, it behoves on you and me that we must live that life. You need to walk just as Christ has walked. Praise the Lord. And I told us that the text for this study, for this teaching, was taken from the book of Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. The Bible says, Therefore, put to death whatever in you uh, is worldly, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, greed, which is idolatry. Praise the Lord. So it is you that we put to death. It is you that we do that work. The Bible says, Look at Philippians chapter 2. He said, Work out your salvation with fear and what? And trembling. It is you that we work out that salvation. The decision is yours. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And I'm telling us that God that demands us that we should be holy, he knew that our capacity, our inbuilt, uh, the way he built us after we got born again, we are to come to that level. Why are we not coming to that level? We said it last week. Why would we find it difficult that we cannot move to that level that God tells us to move? In Romans chapter 8, 
verse 12 to 13. Romans chapter 8, verse 12 to 13. The Bible says, uh, So then, brothers, we are not obligated to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you are going to die. If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. If by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the physical flesh, if you shrink a physical flesh, then you will begin to live. Consider those words very well. And the one that we read in Colossians 3 verse 5, the Bible says, we should put to death. So, how can we get to this level? Man of God, how can I put to death? How can by the Spirit put to death the deeds of the body? So, how can I do it? Romans chapter 6 verse 14. The Bible says, For sin shall no longer reign, shall no longer be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. That means sin cannot continue to reign in your mother body. The decision is yours. The day you got born again, the Lord has empowered you to come up to that level. So how can you put sin to death? How can you put self to death? How can you have victory over self? I told us last week, the number one thing that you must know, that you must do, is that you must know the right left from the right, and you must know that obedience to God is necessary. Praise the Lord. Obedience to God is what? It's necessary. It's compulsory. The Bible said in that uh, Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19, says, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the fruit of the land. If you are willing and obedient, obedience is a key. If you understand this concept, you will come up to the level of holiness. If you choose to consistently obey the word of God, the one that you act, the one that you learn, you must simply start saying to yourself, no more excuses. I told you last week, last week, I say, tell that person by your side, tell him, no more excuses. No, Adam and Eve, when they committed that sin, they, were, they, they started the blame game. Hey, Adam, why do you eat the fruit? It was not me, oh, I don't know. It was Ifo. If, where do you eat the fruit? It was not me, oh, I don't know. It was snake, oh. God did not even ask snake. If God asked snake, snake would have answered, it was not me, oh, it was Satan, oh. If God answered, Satan, said, it was not me, oh, it was this, oh. Our God don't listen to excuse. Our God understands. So, stop giving excuses for committing that sin. Why do you play bets? Why do you fornicate? Why do you why do you see? Why are you why do you murder? Why do you backbite? It was because it was because of what? Until you begin to take responsibility and see sin as in being seen unto God, not unto men. Then you begin to obey. You begin to know that you when you, you commit a sin, any sin either known or unknown, it is unto, unto God alone. Praise the Lord. Stop giving excuses for your disobedience unto God. Joseph, when he was in Potiphar's house, he said to the Potiphar wife, that, will I do this and sin unto God? Yeah, he cannot continue to do this and sin unto God. The same way, you cannot continue to live down your life that same way. And continue and expecting that you get that level of holiness. You cannot sin, do commit that sin. That sin that you committed, it is not unto man, but unto who? Unto God. So, uh, God is not a masochist. God we, is not a magician. Many of us, we are thinking that God will be the magic wand and just stop you from going to that sin. No. God expected you, through Holy Spirit, to play your part. God expected you. And pastor, how can I play my part? I told us last week that you must consider what Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. Apostle Paul says, 
everything is permissible for me, but not everything is helpful. And I said, number one thing, if you want to continue to obey God, if you want to obey and move up to the level of holiness, you must ask that question. Ask yourself, is this thing that I'm doing, is it helpful? Is it helpful? There are many things that are not sinful. There are many things themselves that are not sinful. There are places that you can go that are not sinful. But is it helpful? Ask yourself, is it helpful to me spiritually? Is it helpful to me physically? Is it helpful to me uh, emotionally? If you cannot find cogent answer for those three things, then stop it. Stop it. It will not take you to that level of holiness. Is it helpful? Don't ask yourself. If, if everything is permissible to me. Somebody said, God did not say, after all, we asked last week, that one of those things that God said we should not do, that God did not say we should not do, but it's not helpful to us. One of it is that God did not say we should not smoke. Did God write it that I don't, don't smoke? No, but it's not helpful to your health. God did not say you should not go clubbing. But it's not, it's not good for you. So they are, they, they are beneficial. And that, that you must consider it. Are they beneficial for us? Because something God did not mention it, is it helpful to you? And Apostle Paul was saying to the Corinthian brethren, you must ask this thing, if it is not sinful, but you need to think, is it helpful? You only need to ask yourself whether it is beneficial or helpful for you. That's number one thing that you must ask. We have people in our life that may, be, may not be simple to talk to, but they are sure are not beneficial. They are not helpful to us spiritually. Those friends that you hang around with, those people that are being your friend, they are not helpful to you. They are not, they are, they are not beneficial to you. They, they are only really drawing your only life back. They are only pulling back your holy life. That was why you can't get to that level of holiness that God expected you to get to. Praise the Lord. And last week, when I say, number two thing, number two question that I said you must ask is that you must ask yourself, does it bring you under his power? Praise the Lord. Anything that you are doing, you must ask yourself. He said, First Corinthians 6, verse 12. He said, Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be brought under the control of anything. I will not be brought under the control of anything. I will not be pressed down. Nothing will bring me under his power. That's another important question. All these things, as Christians, we are not to be brought under the power of anything except the will of God. If we must be under the power of anything, we must be under the power, under the influence of the will of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As a child of God, you must be able to give up anything, anything to the will of God. Check very well. If you are addicted to anything, if you are, some people are addicted to food. Some people are addicted to sex. Some people are addicted to talk. Some people are addicted to film. Some people are addicted to television. Some are addicted to telephone. Those things are taking place of God, the place of God in your life. So you must ask yourself, is it putting me under anything that puts you under has become your God? The Lord said to Abraham, Abraham, my friend, Abraham, take thy son, thy son Isaac, whom thou lovest. I, Abraham has turned Isaac to his God. What God did to Abraham was that he has to kill the God that Abraham is turning Isaac to that day at the mountain of Moriah. God has to kill the God, deputy God, that Abraham is making out of Isaac. And because Abraham can give everything, how much more can you go? If you want to get to the level of holiness, Unto the Lord. You must be ready to give everything. Submit everything. Unto Jesus I surrender. You must sing that song consciously. You must confess it that I surrender all totally. Nothing must put you under. Note it very well. Instead, you must know that Apostle Paul told the Christian uh, in Corinthian brethren that anything that bring you under his power as have 
influence over you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Number three thing we are we stop last week uh, 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 Wednesday is that in that first Corinthians chapter eight verse thirteen. First Corinthians chapter eight verse thirteen. The pertinent question that you must ask that does it hurt others? The Bible says, it, therefore, if food causes my brother to fall, I will never again eat meat, so that I will not cause my brother to fall. Most times, there are some things that cause our brother to fall, there are some things that may cause to not to fulfill the counsel of God. So, ask yourself, does that thing, is it not hurtful? Praise the Lord. Let me ask us, what are things that are hurtful? To our fellow brother. What are those things that are hot that we normally do to our fellow brothers and sisters? Yes. That is hindering our that is hindering our life of holiness. What are the things that are hot? Yes. 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 Is anybody answering me? Things that are hot that we normally do at times. Yes. Some words are hot. When you said ah, you, you look at a young lady. And you are telling that lady that don't you know that you are not pretty at all? She will be asking herself, so more oh, pretty. But Akunle said, I'm not pretty. You might thought it was a joking matter. The lady we got back home and be looking at mirror, watching mirror, experiencing herself. So, so uh, uh, you must ask yourself that some actions, some words. Some reactions are awful to our fellow brethren. And those things are like hindrance to the level of holiness that God is expecting us to come to. Those things is hindering, is killing the influence of flesh over our life. It's those things is inspiring flesh more. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. The Bible says, So in everything. Do to others what you will have them do to you. For these sum of the law and, and, and the prophets, we must be conscious of our actions. You must ask that question. Is it awful to others? If what you do is awful, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. If your actions or your reactions, if your behavior, if your words, if your thought is as many times we discuss somebody behind when he or she is not there. Our discussion, our gossiping words was so odd. What you said about her, what you are saying about him was so demeaning, was so odd that you cannot stand. Uh, you, 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 we stand under the cloak, Shebi and speaking the truth. What kind of truth is that? Bible says, Ephesians chapter 4, it says we should speak the truth in love. If you must speak the truth to your fellow brother or sister, let it be in what? In love. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are the words we are speaking or to about someone either present or not present? You must ask that question. If you must get to the level of holiness that God is acting from you, you must ask that question. Is that word awful or not? Is that word uh, 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 awful or not? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Okay? Another thing that we must ask yourself, another thing that you must ask yourself, number four, remember, what is number one? Is it what? Number one, is it what? That's no, no, number one, we started last week, last Wednesday. Yes. Number one. Yes. Number one, is it helpful? Yes. Number two, what? That's number two. Yes. Number three, is it is it hurtful? Is it hurtful? Number three. Number one again, is it what? Is it helpful? Yes. Spiritually, physically, emotionally, is it is it beneficial? Number two, is it what? The is being under under his power. Number three, does it what? Is it odd? You must ask yourself whether it is odd true or not. All those things are yeah, things that you have to ask yourself. Whether this thing that you are doing is odd true. And number four, it, uh, 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 does it glorify God? 
1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. The Bible says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything for God's glory. You must ask yourself, does he glorify God? The action that you put up, the reactions, the word do you speak, is he glorifying unto God? Praise the Lord. Not those four things. If you must attain that level of holiness, if you must, if you must attain the level of holiness that God is taking you to, these four major things, major questions, you must ask yourself. Notice that there is nothing inherently uh, 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 sinful by eating food or drinking. Nothing is all bad when you eat food. Normally, when you drink food, when you do those things, it's not too difficult, it's not bad, mm, it's, not, it's, not, it's not worse. When you, anything bad. But when I begin to eat, when my food is awful to you, when we, must, we must do everything unto the glory of God. Remember, the nation Israel was condemned because of their poor actions caused the Gentiles to blaspheme God. Some people will say, if what is Christianity is about, I will not go to church again. Because Brother Lagwaja, or Sister Lagwaja has done this, I will not go to church again. Because of this, what is doing, I will not go to church again. Not it very well. Some people's actions are full, some people's Christianity in jeopardy. Some people's actions are full, some people's Christianity in jeopardy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us return to that question. You must note it very well. If the Christianity that you say you are practicing, is it a glorifying God? Are you glorifying God with it? Is it, norm, is it the kind of Christianity that God is expecting to practice? And those things will not allow you to get to the level of holiness. You have to see that it is always about arguing. How much alcohol is considered drunkenness in our body? But you must consider it that if you drink alcohol or you smoke cigarettes, is it glorifying to God? Praise the Lord. As a pastor, I now went clubbing. I now put beer. Though I'm not drinking, I'm not doing anything. It's on my table. Is it, am I glorifying God with it? Am I honoring God with it? What will God say with it? No. So you must you have to think beyond this element. Apostle Paul said, if it will cause another to stumble, though it may be my liberty, I will I must not do it. I will not do it. If that thing will cause brother A or sister B to stumble, if my dressing style, if my eating style, some of us we found that attitude. We said we are Christian. We wanted to oppress. I, 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 I used to dress to kill. I wanted to dress to oppress on Sunday. You, and people that did not have been looking at you. That does not say you should not wear good clothes. But then you must know that everything you do must glorify God. Consider these four pertinent questions. And see that these give us greater guidelines that we are often looking for concerning what is pleasing to God or what is not. Many people are asking, how can I get to that level? I cannot, I cannot put self under, under suppression. You must answer these four questions. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I said, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And what is your own part in it? Number one, that it must be your part. It, 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 you must begin to make a commitment. How can I make a commitment? Then you must get serious. You must get serious. Jesus Christ said in Luke chapter 14, verse 33. Luke 14, 33. Jesus said, Any of you who does not give off everything, he cannot be my disciple. So we are in the time to be serious. How can I be serious?
treatment. You must determine because that does not say Satan will not tempt you. That does not say temptation will not come. In fact, as a matter of fact, the more you get serious, the more you get tempted. So we if we say we are not going to be tempted, we are lying to ourselves. If we said, so some of us we said, I will not do it again. Let me just do this one now. The spirit of let me do it now. You cannot, you cannot live under that suppression. You must make an important election today that every time we say no or every time we say yes to temptation, we are putting ourselves under that temptation. But any time we say no to it, we are subjecting the temptation under us. So you must make a commitment that from today henceforth, I will not do this thing. I will stand by my word. I will not tell lie. I will tell the truth. M many, many a times we, we, we find it difficult to, to contend with our ang uh, anger issues. Many a times as a believer, we find it fragile that it is not Sister Femi that make me angry. No, no, no. I'm a, I, 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 I just have to be angry. I'm an Ekiti man. I'm an Ejesha man. In our, in our state, in our country, in our, in our part of the world, that, that's our nature. No, I'm a sanguine man. I'm a choleric man. When you got born again, the born again in you must suppress your choleric man. The Christianity in you must bring the suggestion, the Jesha, Jesha spirit. And that is what the Bible is saying to us here, that it, you must be committed to it. When you got born again, the spirit of God in you must subject that spirit of God uh, uh, inside you. You must make a commitment. The longer we continue in sin, the worse we may likely not get out of it. So you must suppress. The longer we continue in a sin, the worse we make it very difficult for ourselves not to get out of it. But the more we said no, you don't yield to it. You said no to it. I will not yield to this one. The sin will come to you now. You said no to it. It will tempt you now. You said no to it. I'm a, I'm a young lady. I will keep my virginity. You make a commitment. You begin to pray to that commitment. You begin to work to that commitment. You begin to develop in it. When you said no to it now, it will not come again. You come later. You said no to it now. You begin to grow in that level. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Number two, after you must have made commitment, number two thing that you must do is that you must make it a aim not to sin. Instead of saying just one time, just one more time, you need to adopt a strategy that I will not go into sin again. Job, he said, I have made a covenant with my eyes, I will not look unto a virgin. So you must determine, you must say to yourself that I will not go into it again. Like when a Christian said, let me do it just one more time. One more time. That Christian is saying, what the Christian is saying is this, is that it's like a soldier on the battlefield that is said, let me just take one bullet. Just one time. A soldier with that aim uh, 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 will not live long. If you said, let me, not, let me just get it, but it will not be much. Such a soldier will not live long. Praise the Lord. I want to encourage you. God is by your side. The goal is to avoid the fiery death of Satan at all costs. Don't go into sin. Determine. Make it your aim that we're not going to sin. Let me conclude by saying this. Make the resolve today in our lives that we're not going to sin. That is when you can move to the level of holiness. Jonathan Edward, an American preacher, said it this way. Resolve Never to do anything which you will be afraid to do if it were the last hour of your life. Resolve never to do anything which you will be afraid to do if it were to be the last hour of your life. Let me read it and personalize it to myself that as a believer, you must resolve never to do anything which I will be afraid to do if it were to be the last hour of my life. If God come to you, that you are leaving this world between 8 and 9 a.m., determine not to do those things that resolve within yourself, things, the thing that it will be to be the last hour of your life. Don't do it. Hmm. That is good resolve. It is a true, true resolution because this may be the last hour of your life. This may be 
Many of us, we thought we have tomorrow. I said to us, resolve never to do anything which I would be afraid to do if it were to be the last hour of my life. Resolve never to do anything which I would be afraid to do if it were to be the last hour of my life. And you must, you must, note, it very, you must note it very well that our, our, our life might end any time. You do not owe your life. So anything that you resolve not to do, if it's just the last closing time of your life, we do not know when the Lord will come. You do not know when rapture will come. We do not know when it is your last hour of this life. Let us never do anything that will put our spiritual life and our eternal life in jeopardy. Consider it. Ask it. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. You must ask that question. Number one question is what? Is it what? Is it helpful? Number two, will it bring me under its control? Number three, does it hurt others? Is it awful? Number four, does it glorify God? Only when we diligently and thoughtfully ask and answer this question, that is when we can begin to move to the level of holiness. Praise the Lord. Anybody with question before we pray? Anybody with question before we pray? I want us to close our eyes wherever we are and begin to pray. Say, God, help me. Say after me, say, Lord, help me to move to that level of holiness that you desire of me. Pray in the name of Jesus. Let us pray it very well. Lord, help me to move to that level of holiness that you desire of me, that you require of me. Lord, help me. Pray for yourself very well. Lord, help me. Lord, help me that in my secret heart, no other love succeed. No rival love survive. And I will serve only you alone. In the name of Jesus, that level of holiness that you want me to be, Lord, help me to move to that level. Give me the grace, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, all those that have been lacking, O oh Lord, Lord, you will correct me by yourself, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we are free. That's what you are saying now. So if we get to a particular level, that sin that you are toying with, we will not expose them. You will become an officer, a deputy director, United Nations. And little lie that you are toying with. I remember a friend of us told us that he will never in his life, he will never in his life, under age or change his age, whenever he's going for any interview. He went for an interview of a United Nations job. And he has already removed two years out of his age. And he has passed all the interview, all the interview, the remaining oral interview with some four executives. One of them, a woman, began to calculate. You said you finished secondary school in 1985. You said finished primary school in 1900. And you are finishing university in this year. You are this age right now. How old are you when you finish secondary school? Does that mean you are 13 years when you finish secondary school? And he was saying, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, and the board looked at each other. And the guy said, this is the United Nations job that he has been dreaming for. They said, never in his life. I'm telling you, you must ever, if you wanted to get to that level of holiness as a Christian, many, of, many believers today, we took lie and things that we do with end of levity. If Christ will come today and judge you, will you stand by your word that this thing is true to, is, is, is helpful? I want us to pray. So say, Lord, search me. Say it. If there is any way that I'm sinning against you, correct me today. Pray in the name of Jesus. Pray for yourself. Any way that I'm sinning against you, Lord, correct me today. Lord, search me. Search my heart. Knows my thoughts. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we are free. See, after we say, by this word I will not be condemned. Rather, I will be justified. Pray in the name of Jesus. The Bible said the word that you hear now, they are alive and spirit. Lord, by this word I will not be condemned. Rather, I will be justified. In the name of Jesus, pray for yourself very well. 
by this word I will not be condemned. Rather, I will be justified. In Jesus' name we are praying. Father, in Jesus' name, we commit as heaven to you. You are our Father, our Creator. In any way that we have been yielded to temptation, today, O oh Lord, by your Spirit in us, you will give us the grace not to yield or, or to temptation in any area of our life, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. The grace to stay, to say no to temptation, we receive today, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name. By this word, we will not be condemned. Brother will be justified in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we are free. Praise the Lord. If you have any questions, you can send to us, send to us on our, our, our WhatsApp, on our Facebook, our Instagram page, or our Twitter. Our DM is open. Slide into our DM. Send message to us. Let us know how it is at your end. And the Lord will be with you in Jesus' name. Let me remind us that we have uh, the uh, uh, Adura Uro, a prayer program that is trending all over the world. Connect with us on this platform on a radio platform uh, uh, www.mislr.com for slash radio or www.cthsharatin.org for slash radio. You will connect with us and you listen to Adura Uro every day of the week, Monday to Friday, 5.30 a.m. to 6 a.m. The Adura Uro is trending all over the world. Make sure you connect with us. And as you do so, the Lord be with you in Jesus' name. Much more by the grace of God. Don't let us forget the 30 days fasting and prayer. And the team is Master Key. It is we are today is day 17. Remaining 13 more days. Prepare yourself. The prayer point is on the church platform. Connect with it and pray those prayer points, and your prayers will be answered in Jesus' name. Number three is that a uh, 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 miracle hour comes up on Friday. Prepare your mind for it. We are going to be praying all the prayer points for the fasting and prayer on Friday. And as we do so, our prayers will be answered in Jesus' name. Our services come up online, as we know, on Sunday between 8 and 9.15 a.m., including Sunday school. Tell somebody to tell somebody to tell somebody. By the grace of God, the last three days of this month, 28, 29, and 30 will be revival. 28 and 29 will be, that's a Sunday and Monday, will be an evening revival. Why on Tuesday, stroke July 1, is going to be a, a, a crossover night. It's going to be a prayer on Master Key. The Master Key that you need to cross to that level that God is taking you to, receive it today in Jesus' name. It shall be well with us in Jesus' name. The Lord will oppose us in Jesus' name. We will not be a failure in Jesus' name. The grace of God will not deprive from your life in Jesus' name. As you go to bed tonight, the Lord will protect you. In the name of Jesus, the raging fire of coronavirus, the Lord will quench it in Jesus' name. It will not enter your house. You will not be a victim of it. Your family, your, 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 your uh, 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 acquaintances, your friends, your relations will not be a victim of coronavirus in Jesus' name. So shall it be. Thank you, Lord, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name, we are free. May the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. It is well with you in Jesus' name.